Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Ah, what's that I hear? Ah, the sound of snowblowers in the air. Coming up, we'll talk to some folks after their third round of shoveling today. And those snow totals are piling up from our first major snowstorm of the season. Off the top tonight at 11, some areas got hit with nearly 10 inches of snow. It's just crazy to think in yeah. November. We already have dozens of school closings piling up on ClickOnDetroit.com, and that list could grow with many roads still a mess. Ben, it didn't matter where you lived. It was a very slow commute everywhere. What should we expect overnight? Yeah, some of us will get a break overnight, and, and we'll see that stuff pretty much wrap up. Others, it is going to continue through tomorrow morning, and four live radar shows we had this really smooth area of consistent snow earlier tonight. Now we're starting to see some of these darker shades where we're getting a little bit more intensification here on the east side. Plus, we've got that lake effect component. Those onshore winds coming in, just fueling even more accumulating snow. That's the southern end of San Alec County, and that's going to continue uh, even south of 69 at times, depending on where those bands set up. So, so far, Look at all of these nine inch totals, Wixom, Ann Arbor, Lake Orion, down to Armada. And the numbers were a little bit lower uh, down in the south zone where they only got more than three inches of snow, but a lot of us turned in those six to nine inch totals. And there will be some additional accumulation across the heart of the area, but very little. It's really going to be in these counties where the winter storm warning remains in effect until 5 a.m. Guys. And of course, once people navigated through the snow to get home, they had to shovel it. And in fact, that's going on even at this hour. Let's bring in Jason Colthorpe, who is live in Ferndale tonight. Jason. Boy, you can hear the snowblower still going in certain parts now, and they've been going all day with this all day snow and the plow still haven't hit some of the side streets in the neighborhoods like the one we're in right now. And as Michiganders, we're used to holiday snowstorms, right? It's just the holiday we're not used to it be falling on is Veterans Day. A relentless snowstorm blanketing Metro Detroit Monday. It caused several problems on freeways, but also on the surface streets, with this city bus sliding into a DPD squad car at the corner of Conant and Nevada. In neighborhoods, cars are slipping and sliding like you'd expect, but also some tree limbs succumbing to this unusual heavy snow. What about it do you hate? Uh, definitely driving in it. It looks really pretty. If I could just go for a walk right now with my dog, I'd be happy, but I don't want to drive in this. It's yeah. too soon. Yeah, nobody wants a snowstorm before winter even officially arrives, right? I actually like the snow. Like, I couldn't wait to shovel, and I got to try out my new snowblower, so I've been having a good time. <laughs> You're the one guy who's been waiting for today. Yeah, I couldn't wait, and I also like to drive in the snow. I know a lot of people don't, but I really like it. And as we rolled into the evening hours, it became round three for shoveling for some folks. We live in Michigan, so that's that's the whole thing. Like, expect snow. It's going to happen. Yeah. That's true. We, we say that every winter, right? Well, let me take you back to the tree limb problem just for one second. Here's a good example of what I'm talking about, how heavy this snow has been today. Just look at the tree limbs here on this big tree and how much they're sagging. And if I direct your attention over to the top of this light pole, you can see how these limbs are really falling on those wires. And this is going to be something we're going to want to keep an eye on overnight on how many branches might fall because of this heavy snow and how many lines it might bring down with it. Just keep in mind as you get out there tomorrow morning and you want to start shoveling again, there could be some dangerous spots uh, in regard to situations like this. Yeah. Live in Ferndale, Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. Yeah, no doubt DTE and consumers on alert at this hour for that very problem. The snowy conditions are being blamed for a deadly crash on Hines Drive in Westland. A woman was killed after losing control of her car and hitting a guardrail. Her name has not yet been released. Our Tim Pamplin's been out on the roads this evening. He is live right now on I-75. Let's see if things have improved at all, Tim. Really not, Devin, they haven't actually. As Ben mentioned, the snow showers just keep on coming here along 75 near 94. It's been an awful evening. It started with a commute. I asked a question on social media. So tell me in one word, how was your commute? And the responses were unanimous. Frightful, 
long, absurd, unbelievable. Yes, the evening commute was bad and it hasn't gotten much better out here this evening. It started early with the jackknife semis all over the freeway system. This one on 96 near 275 and as the night progressed, the snow didn't let up. More spin outs than we can count. Here, Taylor police helping to push this old Crown Vic up a ramp from 94. Oakland County sheriffs tell us that in just one eight hour shift today, they had 123 crashes, eight injury accidents and 40 road runoffs. Yes, Oakland County, particularly hard here. I-96 corridor, just treacherous this earlier, earlier all evening. So uh, we've got to wait and see, see what the roads are like in the morning, if the road crews can get out and get these freeways and byways cleared up. That is the scene right now along 75. Look at this, Tim Pamplin. Local four. Back to you, Devin. Yeah, okay, Tim, you uh, take it easy on your way back to the studios. As the temperatures drop, we of course expect the morning drive could be a slow one, especially on the untreated roads. We'll be here to help you get to work and to school on time, provided your school's open. Uh, weather and traffic every 10 minutes on the fours. Kim. A thousand Utica community school teachers brave the conditions outside to protest tonight's school board meeting. Teachers in the district have been in a contract talk since March. And it's not going that well. Mar McDonald is live in Sterling Heights tonight. Mara, the union just filed an unfair labor practice complaint against the district. The union sure did. And to give you an idea, Kimberly, the frustration level out here tonight, plus 10. Take a look. We're fired up! Can't take it the frustration level for Utica Community Schools teachers is off the charts. It's been since March, there is no contract, and the union and the district appear to be dug into their respective trenches. This is our second time around having to fight this hard for a contract. Last time it ended in concession, and this time we want to be honored and respected by our employer for the sacrifices that we made across nine years. More than a thousand teachers and their supporters picketed the Board of Education meeting. It's time! They didn't go in and disrupt the meeting, staying outside in the snow instead. It's time for a fair and equitable contract. We've been patient. We've done what the district asked. The sticking point is step increases in salary, something the district says it has been fair on over the past nine years. In previous contracts, during that time, uh, teachers did receive step increases, half steps, or additional compensation, six of those nine years. The union wants quicker step increases. Do you think you've been reasonable? I think we've been more than reasonable, yes. The problem? The district thinks it has too. The actions of the UAA are to divert attention away from the union's proposals. Back here live, it is back to the bargaining table tomorrow, but after you heard that, it doesn't look like there's going to be any sort of progress anytime soon. We're live in Sterling Heights tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, a 70-year-old veteran is recovering from fractured bones in his face and several other injuries after being attacked at a bus stop. Philip Ramsey, Vietnam veteran, was waiting for the bus at the corner of Gratiot and State Fair Friday. He got into a fight with a group of young men. Ramsey's daughter believes he was hit with a crowbar during the fight. Tonight, she has a message for her father's attackers. I don't want to hear my son was perfect, my son wouldn't do that. I want all five of them caught. Turn yourself in because it's everywhere. You're not going to hide from this. You left my daddy for dead. A young woman witnessing the attack was able to intervene, perhaps preventing more serious injuries. The police are still searching for those five attackers. Former President Jimmy Carter is in the hospital tonight and set to have surgery tomorrow morning. The 95-year-old was admitted to Emory University Hospital for a procedure to relieve pressure on his brain caused by bleeding due to his recent falls. A spokesperson says President Carter is resting comfortably with his wife, Roslyn, by his side. Uh, just into the newsroom, Detroit Public Schools closed tomorrow. That's one of several districts that's going to be shut down due to the snow. We've got the full list at clickondetroit.com, but that's the state's biggest district. That's right. Probably yep. more to come, yep. too. Still ahead, maintenance concerns at one of the country's biggest airlines. Allegations against Southwest that could ground dozens of its planes coming up. And four robbers storm into a jewelry store armed with hammers, but they had no plan for what happened next. Steve. Thank you.
Back in April, Chuck Smalley, a World War II veteran, and Mary, his wife of 70 years, lost their home in a fire. What they most treasured were two large boxes of family photos pulled out of the home, hopefully before they were ruined. This is their life memory, this is their story. Furniture and clothing can be replaced. But what's not so easily replaced? The memories of a lifetime. But we're gonna try. Coming up. It can happen to anyone. I'm a hardworking mother. I just fell on some hard times and really needed some help. Antoinette was supporting a sick father and fighting through family hurdles when a shutoff notice showed up on her door. It was just a devastating time. Tomorrow at 5, find out how a local nonprofit came to her rescue, keeping her lights and heat on. The world came together to help us through this journey. Help Me Hank reveals how they could help you in your time of need. Tomorrow on Local 4 News at 5.